There's going to be two components to this talk. First, a presentation from Matt Bryan at Samsung Ads. And then he's going to be sitting down with Bobby Carley from ISPA and John Longhurst from Long Term Digital. So I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, and without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Matt. Please put your hands together. Uh, thank you very much. Hi. Um, wow, the introduction's already been done for me, so I almost get to it. Um, so we all know Samsung as a brand. Um, many of you will have Samsung products. Um, three in five consumers have a Samsung product. Um, I have four, uh, but I get a great discount. But I'm sure many of you are sat here thinking, what do I have? Many of you will have TVs. Many of you will have our kitchen appliances. Many of you will have Samsung phones. Um, and a note for iPhone users, other phones do exist. Um, now, I know that's a tough one to do at a media gig. But anyway, um, the point is Samsung knows consumers. And more importantly, Samsung knows TVs. But the number one smart TV brand globally, the number one operating system, we have our own fast streaming app, meaning we really know streamers and what they're doing. And we have 60 million connected smart TVs, 9.5 million of those in the UK. That gives us the largest deterministic TV viewing set in the globe. Now, what does that mean? For us, that means we call it a glass level view. We know everything the consumer is doing. So it means when someone's watching linear, we know what programs they're watching, but more importantly, we know what ads they're seeing. We know when someone's streaming and we know what app they're using, and we know how long they spend streaming with that app. We also know what devices are connected, and we even know when someone's gaming, what gaming console they're using, and actually what game they're using. And this is all done in a cookie-less, double permissioned, privacy safe way. So when I say Samsung really knows TV. Now, why is that important? We use this data to drive great experiences for our, our customers, but we also use it to power our ads platform for brands. Now, I'm gonna take a step back and talk about connected TV. When we look at smart TV penetration, it's on a relentless rise and that will continue. And with CTV penetration comes streaming. What does that mean for brands? It's changing the way you reach your consumers. It's changing the way you're going to have to communicate with them. So I think let's take a look at some of this data around streaming to understand a bit more about what it really means for brands. Um, I'm going to caveat at this point, say this is Samsung data. So Samsung data uh, from our TVs, um, it's broadly represented the UK, um, skews a little bit younger that's fine, it's a little bit more forward facing. So it's a bit of a window into the future of streaming habits. I think it's really important we have to take a look at it. So what is happening? 84% of the streaming universe, sorry, 84% of the Samsung universe streams. Um, that breaks down to about eight streaming sessions per week. When we say streaming session, you could be watching multiple apps in that. And they're doing it for a really long time. It's about two hours. If we go back 20 years, that's all that would have been linear. That's been completely taken out and changed. Now we say a little bit more, well, what are the apps are they actually using? I can imagine a lot of you are thinking, well, Matt, they're probably just you know, in Netflix and they're just doing that. Actually, we see a real spread across different apps. We see, on average, people use about four apps in a given few months. Um, and that's spread between uh, Broadcaster VOD, that's spread between AVOD, Advertiser Funding VOD, that's spread between SVOD. Now, you'll notice I'm using these horrible industry acronyms. Bear that in mind, we're going to come back to that. And then we dig into a bit further, actually, how does that split? Um, about half that time is spent with the SVODs, you know, the Netflix, the Amazons, the Disneys. Um, and the rest is spent in either AVOD or fast services. BVOD is about 9%. But when we look at the growth, we look at the growth, we see that actually the real growth is coming from not the SVODs, they're pretty much topped out. It's coming from the AVOD, the BVOD, and really from the fast. Um, I'd like to think of it almost in a different way. It's, we have 0.9 billion streaming experiences in H1 of last year. That is 0.9 billion ways that have changed in the last 10 years about how you would have communicated with your customers. To simplify it slightly, we can just look at how many times did people launch apps. And we see some really interesting things. Um, we see, number one, there's a cyclical trend, just like linear. And it's just 
going up. That smart TV penetration graph I showed, it's just going up. So, what does the TV landscape look like? Now, got a chart here that shows kind of daily unique visitors and the time they spent. And you've got the blue bit there, they're linear channels, they're commercial linear broadcast channels. And below it, we've got some fast channels. Then over here on a kind of gray, I've got the BVOD that kind of people don't visit that off as much, but when they do, they spend a great amount of time. And we've got the SVOD in there, and I've broken out YouTube. Now, there's a few geniuses in this room that are going, I completely understand this. This makes complete sense to me. And then there's all the normal people here going, this is an absolute mess. What is this? How, what am I meant to do with this? But this is the reality of planet buyers. In this new streaming world, it's so fragmented, it's so hard to understand how you put this all together. And in particular, we look at a consumer lens. There's no consumer out there that says, you know what, tonight I'm going to watch some SVOD, then I'm going to watch some linear, then in some cheeky AVOD. <laughs> no one does that. Yet, this is the reality of our industry. So when we break it down, it really should be just TV. And this is where we need to get to. Um, got one slight caveat here. I have broken out YouTube as something different. It's largely user-generated content, uh, a lot of video viewing. Um, it's still very important, very valid, um, but it fulfills some different outcomes for brands, some different KPIs, so that's why we've broken it out. But if we are going to start thinking of this as one TV, we've got some great criteria we believe we've, we could start to piece this together. So Barb have a definition of fit for TV, and that is editorial input and oversight, sounds great, regulatory compliance when the intention to deliver content that aligns with prevailing regulation, and content that provides a brand safe, suitable environment for advertisers, all makes absolute sense. We would just add one more into there to say, big screen, it's viewable on the big screen, that's TV. Let's stop talking about SVOD, AVOD, BVOD. Now that you've got the streaming giants with an ad tier, they probably want to add HVOD in there. So, if we can break down these silos, there's a brilliant future ahead of us. Spoken about one TV, but if we augment that with the amazing power of CTV data, so we know actually linear data, what's happening at this targetable level, streaming data, and put it all together, there's a real possibility to vastly enhance the capabilities of brands. We can see better targeting and optimization, vastly improved measurement, and, and this is a really interesting one at the moment for us, pre-campaign insights, all powered by the new data landscape of CTV. Um, it's my great pleasure to preview um, a product that we've got that just shows a glimpse of the power of CTV. Um, for us, it's um, Samsung Insights Planner. Um, it's an insights plan that sort of connects audiences to the missed TV audiences. Sorry, connects advertisers to their missed TV audiences. This will be released later this week, but I'm going to give you a preview. Um, here's an example. We have... It's an old slide. Um, we have Linear Brand, and their target audience is, I want to reach 18 to 34-year-olds. Um, we then can look at their linear campaign and say, of that target audience, how many did you reach? In this example, 72% of that audience was, sorry, 28% of that audience was reached by the linear campaign. But what about the remaining 72%? How do you reach that? We can use CTV data to understand, actually, where is that audience? In this case, they were heavy streamers, the vast majority of them. So how do you find them? CTV data enables you to find that audience and follow them to the platforms that they're spending their time. So in this instance of the example, um, actually they still had, of that unreached audience, a chunk of time spent in linear. But we see um, the amount of time they spent in SVOD. We can break down where, how much time they're spending in commercial BVOD, what the reach is there. How much time they spend in AVOD, where are they gaming? Even Samsung TV Plus, our streamer, how much of that audience could you reach there? The point is, there's real possibilities to understand and do better planning around the audiences that you did not reach and what do you do next? How do you optimize? How do you plan better for the next campaign? This can be taken much further. Um, I won't dwell on it too much, but for instance, imagine if you had 
great day part, hour, minute feedback about actually where are your audiences during the daytime, what could you do for your linear campaign spend, your spot buys, etc. any of the spend you want to make. If you had that level of data, not just at a broad audience, but a specific audience that mattered to you that you wanted to reach, that's not necessarily available as part of trading currencies. So, in conclusion, um, the demand for smart TVs has been driven by growing customer desire for online content consumption, gaming, streaming services, and most importantly, a more personalized viewing experience. As smart TVs become more integrated with other smart devices and platforms, they play a major role in creating a connected home experience. More than ever, the TV is truly the hub of the home, or in more and more cases, the smart home. What does this mean for advertisers? TV has never been more relevant and exciting for consumers, and also for brands. TV has changed but for the better, and as a whole, it's more powerful than ever. A lot of this change is underpinned by data and personalization. So while TV is very much still king, I think it's fair to say that data is the new kingdom. Right, that is enough for me. And on to the main event. I'm very pleased to bring across our special guests. Um, and we're going to continue talking about the power of data to support brands and agencies. Um, Please welcome uh, Bobby Carley, Head of Media and Diversity and Inclusion at ISBA. Bobby and her team at ISBA work closely with brands across the UK. ISBA is actively looking for ways to help brands solve some of their major pain points and have led key industry measurements such as Origin, which we are thrilled to be part of um, as a founding CTV member, and uh, John Longhurst, um, founder and manager director of Long Term Digital, a research consultancy that specializes in buy side research to help media owners, ad tech vendors, and brands understand, understand the advertising landscape. Um, insights shared today will be based from over 3,500 hours of qualitative interviews, which is insane, <laughs> um, and 7,500 surveys. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you for having us. Pleasure. Um, Bobby, I'm going to dive in straight away with something that's very close to my heart. Um, what is Project Origin for the room? What's mm -hmm. its purpose? Um, and have you launched Project Origin because you think measurement is one of the biggest challenges for brands? Well, there's many brands in the room here, so uh, they will nod in agreement. I can honestly say that, well, from the first moment when I joined ISBA and I met individually with many brands, and I was like, so what's your biggest challenge? Consistently, it was measurement. We do, um, we do planning sessions at the, every year, at the beginning of every year with different groups. And honestly, from the programmatic group through to the inclusion network, we get everybody just to hold a board up and say, hey, what's your, what's your biggest challenge? And it is always measurement. And anybody who goes to conferences regularly is now bored <laughs> with the conversation on, on stage of this is what we need. So it was very much, you know, it was, it yeah. was the listening to br what brands want. It wasn't there. There are so many brilliant solutions in the industry, but they're not, and agencies are doing brilliant things as well, but they're just not exactly what brands need in order for them to be efficient and effective enough. So origin is the result of listening to brands, but more origin is the result of brands putting their hands in their pockets driving it forward, sitting around the table consistently yeah. and having that conversation. And um, so it's brilliant, Samsung, first uh, CTV uh, provider around the table. Obviously we have Amazon and YouTube, but Samsung obviously bring such a wealth of CTV measurement experience, which is, which is really needed along obviously with valuable data which is really really significant and uh, you know really simply what advertisers have asked us to, li to deliver on origin are uh, and it it seems so ridiculous saying this to the room but it's where their ads uh, where their ads are placed how many people have seen their ads how often their ads have been seen the quality of their ads it's a uh, you know it's 
Um, one of the Origin team described Origin recently as very unremarkable, which actually I loved because it, it really is. It's, it is answering a very simple question of just being able to take down, the, just taking down those silos. And as an industry, as you pointed out, uh, we have far too many silos and what well, Origin is there to deliver is to take down those silos and deliver independently measured, privacy safe, audited, single source measurement. I think it's, it's so interesting you can boil Origin down to something so simple as deduplicated reach and frequency across TV and digital, mm. as if it's the simplest thing <laughs> in the world. But actually the work done that's had to be done to align those media owners is uh, incredible. Um, it's a beast. Yes. Is, are there any other media owners that, that are next on your hit list as you're successfully there are, ploughing through? Yes. There, are, there are multiple really good conversations going on, as you can imagine. Um, and it, it, it is interesting now, the incoming, I think, as well as we're now about to go into beta trials. So there's 35 advertisers uh, for the first time now with live data from Linear TV, Meta, YouTube and TikTok going in. So which is about two thirds of media going into the beta trial will be will be looked at through the beta trial. So that's going to be really interesting to see what that comes out of that. And then the launch late this year, early 2025, will then launch with about 80 percent of media in there, which will obviously grow as uh, as more and more partners come into to origin. Wow, what a fantastic initiative. Um, yeah, the people working on it on a daily basis, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> um, John, are agencies set up to leverage the full potential of TV today? And what are the gaps? So, yes, they're desperately trying, and I think they're doing a great job. But the, the biggest gaps from all of the research that we've done when we speak to agencies, unsurprisingly, measurement number one. Yeah. Um, I think internally, they talk about their own silos within their agency structure. And then I think about mindset is the third one that they often, often reference. So if you break down measurement, I think you know, that all the streaming data you've just shown, it challenges the, the norms. And therefore, if you can't measure something or don't know how to measure it, it's really hard to plan for it. And so the default position is then to kind of give it a, give it a role. That's what this industry is great at, kind of typecasting things. So when we speak to you know, AV planner buyers or digital planners, they're, they're looking at the role of CTV and streaming. And you know, AV planner buyers, 93% of them said the role's incremental. That's all it is. But your own data shows that from 9 million TVs, more TVs are now streaming. So how can you have it only being incremental if such a vast kind of population is streaming? So I think when something falls between the gaps, of it, it doesn't fit in this traditional TV measurement, you know, whether that's Barb or econometric modeling or MMM. And then also it's not um, cheap cost per views, you know, which is often how the digital mindset is. It falls between the gaps and therefore people don't know how to plan and think about it. Uh, I think if you then bring that into the agency silos and, and kind of what Bobby and Nisbar are doing there about trying to measure across all of the you know, video or motion, sound and motion, it's so hard because agency has got a social video team, you've got an AV team, you've then got a digital video team, you've got a programmatic team. We've been tracking since 2019 the role of CTV. And I think back in 2021, agencies or AV planner buyers said about 36% of them said it was their role right, to plan on CTV. Yeah. We asked them six months ago, they now said it's 64%. I think if we'll ask them in another six months, it'll oh. be 80%. So, and, and by the way, that changes by agency and by client mix. So there's not a right or wrong answer. It's just so unique and it therefore depends. So when you start to look at the agency silos, you go, it's really hard to holistically plan and buy. And then you think about the mindset of those people. So AV plan and buyers will naturally lean towards content, scale, those big reach and frequency moments, whereas digital plan and buyers are generally more au okay fait with audience targeting. And so again, you start to see, well, what's the role and how are we gonna use clever data and targeting? Mm. And one of the big gaps we get, which links us back to measurement is, is it worth paying the premium? So with all that clever data of being able to identify your audience, the danger in this industry is that unless there is an immediate short-term metric to prove it was worth it, we go back to spray and pray. So I think they're the three biggest barriers or gaps that I've seen in agency land, um, measurement, silos, and mindset. Uh, but they are desperately trying to work and navigate this new world and data sets like your own really help them think that through. Yeah, great. 
But that's also reflected in brands as well. We actually had MediaSense come in yesterday uh, to our future operating model group, um, talking through their um, future of agencies research model, which said that one in four agencies are set up for the future. Um, but you know, in terms of being agile enough and the right talent, but um, I think brands would say that they are in the same position as well in terms of having to look at their own structures to work accordingly. So just in this massive time of flux, flux and change, yeah. So do you think there's a disconnect between how our industry views TV and how consumers view TV? Yeah, I, I personally do. I think, I think your, your graphs um, <laughs> that you showed there is genuinely, uh, I think there's a perceived hierarchy when we talk to planner buyers, yeah. um, and probably from the marketeers and the brands this side. Um, I think the power of TV, it's so emotional, which is great. None of the sentiment tracking we do is saying that advertising opportunities on the TV are less important. It's all more important, it's all more exciting. But because it's such an emotional topic, I think every qualitative interview we do starts with, well, I don't do that. And you go, well, I don't watch Fast, or I don't watch this show. Or, and therefore, I know we've all got biases, but it does feel like in the TV world, that becomes kind of perception, becomes reality. So when I look at this perceived hierarchy, you, you hear planner buyers going, well, BVOD Linear does this role. All-encompassing, blanket statement, catch-all term does that. And then FAST does this, and then AVOD does that, and then SVOD does that. And, and our challenge here is I don't think that's the way the consumer thinks. Yeah. I can also be all of those things, um, but the different experiences or the different motivations and mindsets I'm in mean that the way I'm going to experience advertising will change. And I think those catch-all industry-led kind of silos are really dangerous for proper planning and buying. There's also the, um, the whole, we talked, we, we always talk, don't we, in um, advertising about the value exchange, you know, people will accept ads in terms of great content, but I don't think the consumer ever really has previously ever thought, oh good, I'm so happy to watch this break so that I can watch Coronation Street. Um, I love ads, yeah. I, I love ads. Um, <laughs> And obviously, obviously, we've gone through the, you can fast forward ads, you can record, so you don't have to watch them. But I think there is now, there is a world of value exchange with the streaming giants, obviously, because you can choose now whether you're going to have ads or not. You know, yes. you, if you pay less, you get ads. And so they're really, they do really, un I think it's moving consumers in a way to understand the value exchange in a way that we've talked about but hasn't actually really been a reality to moving that more into a rea reality with consumers. And, and I think on that, there's this perception at the moment because SVOD has got you know, some exciting content and I think brands get excited by good content that suddenly my advertising is going to be better off in that environment. And, and that might not be true. You know, if you speak to consumers, they might have a different view because they've paid for that content mm. through subs and therefore the ad experience for them might be very different to somewhere where they're watching it for free and therefore, so it doesn't mean that the advertising is less impactful just because it's in a free space. And I think again, that's this perception, it's very subjective that this kind of content therefore means my advertising will be better. And I don't think it's necessarily about a shoot off between content. I think it's about the experiences and motivations to be in that environment in the first place. It's really interesting. So following on from that, um, you both speak to brands and agencies all the time. What do you think the biggest misconceptions are? And what do you think the biggest opportunities are that are being missed? Um, well, there's multitude, but uh, one of the first, which has already been touched on, is skill sets. And it's, it's really interesting. So we have a TV and video steering group. We have a program, program, uh, program I can't say it, programmatic and performance steering group. Okay. Now, I would say, even four years ago, what have I been at ISBA? Five years. Um, those two worlds, and the, or the, the priorities that those groups were setting themselves for the year were very separate. You know, cookie-less mm. over here, you know, probably you know, still the future landscape of TV over here and TV trading. This year, um, and, this is the and it is interesting because it's the first time on the TV group is understanding data, understanding retail media, understanding uh, clean rooms. You know, the, and then you look at the programmatic group. So 
it, it's a classic case of needing the skill sets to merge. Yeah. So we're actually doing more and more bringing those two groups together um, to have those interesting conversations and to share skill sets. And, but also because the topics are, are now aligning and it'd be interesting to see how long we need two different, two different groups for. Oh, controversial. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I mean, on that kind of if planners or, you know, 64% of AV think they're planning CTV, but then they cite 80% of it goes through programmatic pipes, mm -hmm. instantly you're going, well, you have to join up that conversation. Mm -hmm. And when you speak to the programmatic team, they're, they're not thinking about incremental reach because they're thinking about cost per view. Or, or So instantly you see this kind of disconnect in planning and buying. So I think that mm -hmm. skill set, that learning is really important. From my point of view, you've also got this um, scale and quality. So there is a perception in CTV kind of catch-all term that the quality isn't as good as other environments and I think that just needs to be challenged because I think quality is very subjective and if there is a vast audience watching the content they want to watch then, then that is quality by definition and I think scale um, again probably yesteryear if you're a marketeer in the room you may have been told look I have to bundle all my CTV buys together it's a kind of drop down in the trade desk and da 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 because there wasn't the scale. I think if you speak to you, LG, Amazon, Netflix, Warner, I doubt they're all sold out. Right? So I think there's a lot, of, a lot of scale in those environments now. It's about having good direct conversations. So scale, quality, and it's not incremental only. I think that's the last point. When I look at where the world is moving, you can't just keep pigeonholing streaming as, CT, as, as incremental. It's a valuable play. And it's, it's also rel relevancy, going back to the consumer. Consumers want, sort of won't stand for the same as what they used to stand for. They want yeah. relevancy more than ever, which is what all the data can and should be providing. So we're in the right, we're in the right position to be able to take that forward. You know, there is just more, um, you know, consumers won't put up with bombardment. They won't put up with, I suppose, the crap <laughs> anymore. Not saying anything in our industry is crap. <laughs> Well, that is an interesting place to end. <laughs> <laughs> Consumers won't put up with the crap anymore. Um, John, Bobby, thank you so much. This has been a great conversation about the power of data to support brands and agencies. Um, I'm aware it's coffee time for everybody, so thank you very much. Thank you.